I again, Kenneth Scott Latourette, page 349 in the History of Christianity. The course in Western Europe is dealing with the growth of Christianity in England. Now he's dealing with the Saxons and particularly with the conversion of Scandinavia. Except the Scandinavians, the last of the Germanic peoples to be drawn into the Christian fold were the Saxons, who had remained on the continent after so many of their number had migrated to Great Britain. This was not strange. Their lands lay north of the Frisians and the Hessians, and it was late when the Frankish boundaries were extended to include them. They long resisted conversion, but for they associated it with Carolingian imperialism. Several English missionaries labored among them, and Boniface, armed with papal authority to proclaim the gospel to them, pled for helpers from England, due largely to English efforts by the last quarter of the 8th century a small minority among the Saxons had been won. The conversion of the bulk of the Saxons was through the vigorous use of armed forces by Charlemagne. Charlemagne was determined to bring the Saxons into his realm and in 772 reduced much of the region to ostensible submission. As part of the process of integration under his rule, he insisted upon baptism. He could not always be in the Saxon territories and during his absences repeated revolts broke out. As often as they occurred, he returned with fire and sword. He did not depend entirely upon armed force. Many of the recalcitrant he moved into the Rhineland among a professedly Christian population, thus to facilitate their assimilation. He encouraged missionaries, many of them Anglo-Saxons, to become to these kinsfolk, or rather to come to these kinsfolk of theirs and baptize and instruct them. He divided the land into dioceses and had bishops set over them thus giving the area a comprehensive ecclesiastical organization. Here was the most naked use of armed force for the spread of the faith which Christianity had yet seen. It is pleasant to record that it did not go unprotested, and that the boldest critic of whom we knew was Alcuin, the English scholar who had been brought to court by Charlemagne to aid in the revival of learning, of which we are to hear in a moment. He spoke out quite fearlessly and pled what, that adults be not baptized until they had been properly instructed, and that tithes be not exacted of the newly converted. Whether by force or by quiet instruction by missionaries, the Saxons became staunch adherents of their Christian profession. In the next period they were to become bulwarks of the faith. Before the year 950, beginnings had been made in the conversion of the Scandinavians, that last wave of pagan invasion which was to scourge Western Europe. Willebrod made an effort to plant the faith in Denmark, but without success. The most notable pioneer among the Scandinavians was Ansgar, or Ansgar, who lived apparently from 801 to 865, who was a native of Flanders and is said to have been of Saxon stock. Ansgar began his mission at the instance of the son and successor of Charlemagne, Louis, whose usual designation, the pious, is evidence of his deep interest in Christianity. Like his father before him, but without his exuberant energy, Louis wished to extend the Frankish domain and to do so in close association with the spread of Christianity. To further his purpose, he had an arch archiepiscopal see created with Hamburg as its center, late associated with Bremen, and had Ansgar appointed to it and given papal confirmation and the title of papal legate for the north. Ansgar was courageous, traveled widely, and had some missionaries as helpers, and won a few converts. However, the majority of the Scandinavians were not as yet minded to become Christians. Independent, they especially spurned the suggestion of accepting the faith from agents of the Carolingians, for that would imply and might actually entail submission to rulers whose realms they were raiding. When, late in the 10th and in succeeding centuries, Scandinavia received baptism, it was under the leadership of its own princes and through missionaries from subject England, from which nothing was to be feared politically. Before 950, some of the Scandinavians who settled within Christendom accepted baptism. This was the case in England. It was also true in what came to be known as Normandy. Here the first duke, known variously as Rollo, Hrolf, and Hrolfer 
concluded a treaty with the Carolingian king in 911, by which his holdings were given legal status, and in return he and some of his followers agreed to be baptized. It was not until after 950, however, that the conversion of most of the Scandinavians was accomplished. Speaking of conquest, well, how did the how did Christianity come to conquer the Roman Empire? And you realize that the preparation for that was long before Christ was born, and particularly the Caesar who was on the throne of Rome, the greatest of all the Caesars, actually Augustus, had a lot to do with preparing the way for the spread of Christianity. How Augustus prepared the way, and I've got Michael Green in his book Evangelism in the Early Church to help us to understand that. I'll put that link on your screen. See you soon.